Hi, welcome to today's Peace of Peace. We've been um, lately starting off with uh, the top 10, taking our mindset and bringing it into um, that of gratitude. So when we sit down and write down the 10 things that um, we're thankful for, that we have gratitude for, brings our mindset into a place where we can really be open to God. So we've been doing that each day. I do, before we go into that, I do want to just say, um, in this season, um, starting tomorrow, I, I will be offline for about 10 days and um, coming back on the 20th. But I encourage you, we've been going through um, the devotion, Our Daily Bread. It's a small little pamphlet that you can download on an app if you have a smartphone, or you can order their books to come to your house online, Our Daily Bread. And um, then also we've been reading out of Sarah Young's book called Jesus Calling. And you can download that as an app on your smartphone as well or order her book online. But I encourage you to continue with this. So just to come in with your gratitude in the morning and read the scripture, ask God to reveal to you what he wants you to know. So typically as I'm just studying this each morning and then bringing to you what I'm hearing is that... Um, I'll sit with him and I'll read through the scripture. I'll write out whatever pops out to me, like something that drew my attention um, or something that I maybe don't understand or something that said, I don't know, for some reason it seemed more bold or it seemed like to stand out from all the rest of the scripture that I was reading. And so then I would write that out. And then after I'd say, God, what do you want me to know about this? He's a God who speaks to us. So um, in tu tune your ears to him because he's not silent. Tune your ears to him and then write out what he's teaching you. This is about having a relationship with this with him. It's about having dialogue. It's about learning and then applying what he's teaching you so that it can bring a blessing into your life or change where you need change. So I'll be back on the 20th after today. And um, today we'll, uh, I'm going to start with the, our gra my gratitude and then because um, there's some really good things that God's brought about um, during my time with him today that I want to talk to you about. So gratitude, I said, um, okay, so my first one is for these things because to be able to read my Bible, they look like a bunch of meshed images together until I put these on and then I'm like, wow, look how crisp crystal clear those little words are hmm. so I was thankful for my glasses and then the gratitude I had for and I'm going to address this next one a little bit deeper after the devotion but our meeting with our friends um, we have like four of us couples that have been meeting together for a few years and praying for each other's lives encouraging encouraging each other with what God's been doing in our lives and and um, we had a Zoom meeting with each other last night, which um, showed to be very precious, a beautiful prayer time with them. And then um, I was thanking the Lord for the particular woman in this particular couple that our friends, um, she has such a humble and joyful, trusting disposition in her circumstance. We had gathered together to pray for something that was going on in their lives and um I'm going to come back a little bit more to this, but um, I want to address, I was having gratitude for her attitude and her servant heart and, and her servant heart that became an exhortation without words um, that the Lord used in my life. So, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, I had gratitude for the songbird outside. It will always open up my window just to hear what's going on. And oddly, I had gratitude for the traffic noise. I think um, it, it's off in the distance a bit, but it has been so quiet through COVID that you could tell there was such a drastic change in our in our world. And just to hear traffic noise again was like, oh, a familiar sense of something that seemed normal. <laughs> Nothing really feels normal right now. Um, so oddly enough, traffic noise was something I had gratitude for. And I've never had gratitude for traffic noise. I've always been like, I can't focus on anything with all that traffic noise. But now I have gratitude. Um, my talk with my brother yesterday and praying with him. Missing our mom. 
And she passed away on Thanksgiving Day and caring for our um, aging father. It was just good to talk with my brother who has taken on a lot of uh, caring for him on his own now with COVID just because um, they all live together. I was thanking God too for um, my coffee with my coconut creamer. I love that. For sunshine and fresh air for having time with God, learning from him and experiencing his love for me and your his help in changing my mindset. And then oddly enough, it just not oddly enough. It was just really sweet because I had to like add an 11th one because I was watching my husband yesterday and he just works super hard and he he's in IT um and um but he multitasks like I don't know how he does this, but he's He's helping me with some recordings yesterday while he was editing some things that I needed editing and and then he was proofreading um, something that I had written and helping me with my corrections and and um, and then he's like scrubbing bugs off of windshields while he's while he, while he's releasing um, some things on IT last night and I I just said um, he's amazing and thank you for him God. God gave me a message, but I'm going to save that for after, along with that little note about my friend. So um, we're going to be in Acts today, and Acts chapter 16. These are like one of my favorite one of my favorite verses. Um, but we're reading about Paul and Silas, and um, we're going to start in. I'm going to start in instead of verse 22. I'm going to start in 16 and go through 34. Okay, so here we go. Once, it's, this is, says, Paul and Silas in prison is the title in my NIV. This particular devotion was written by Kristen Holmberg, and she titles it, Not Taking Advantage. So try to hear that through that. Once when we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl. This is Paul talking. We were met by a slave girl who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. Um, she earned a great deal of money for her owners as a fortune teller. Um, this girl followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, these men are servants of the most high God who are telling you the way to be saved. And she kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so troubled that he turned around and said to the spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. And at that moment, the spirit left her. When the owners of the slave girl realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face authorities. They brought them before the magistrates and said, These men are Jews and are throwing our city into an uproar by advocating customs unlawful to us, unlawful for us Romans to accept or practice. The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas, and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten. And after they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison for casting out a demon from a girl. Oh my goodness. And the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. Upon receiving such orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing. They were singing worship songs. They were singing hymns to God. And the, and the, um, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Have you ever been flogged, beaten, and shackled to a prison floor and decided just to worship God? That just totally speaks of their heart for their king. And no matter what their circumstance was, that they could offer up praise to him. I'm going to continue. At midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And at, at once, all the prison doors flew open and everybody's chains came loose. We're going to talk a little bit about how powerful worship is in that. Verse 27, the jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. 
But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. We are all here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. You and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in his house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and all his family were baptized. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole family. The devotion reads this. Several inmates were collecting roadside garbage to reduce their jail time when their supervisor, James, collapsed. They rushed to his aid and realized he was having a medical emergency. One inmate borrowed James's phone to call for help. The sheriff's department later thanked the inmates for helping get their supervisor prompt medical attention, especially because they could have instead they could have instead neglected him, and to his detriment as he was having a stroke. Or they could have used the situation to their own advantage and escaped. The kindness of the inmates' action is not unlike those of Paul and Silas. When they were imprisoned, after they'd been stripped, beaten, and thrown into prison, an earthquake struck so violently that it loosed their chains and shook the prison doors off their hinges. When the jailer awoke, he naturally assumed the prisoners had fled. So he prepared to take his own life to preempt what would have been his punishment for their escape. When Paul shouted, we are all here. The jailer was to, the jailer was so moved by their actions uncharacteristic of prisoners that he became curious about the God they worshiped. Ultimately, be ultimately coming to believe in him too. The way we treat others reveals what we believe and value. I want to say that again because I'm going to be speaking about this. The way we treat others reveals what we believe and what we value. When we choose to do good instead of harm, our actions might just prompt them to wonder about God and about the God we know and love. Her charge is, in what situation can you choose to not take advantage of your own gain? To not take advantage for your own gain. And how might that decision benefit someone else? And her prayer. Loving God, help me to make choices that will draw others to you. So I started to write a bit about this and the Lord started to speak to me just in regards to our couple. They're a couple who lives in a um, harder part of Minneapolis. Actually, where all the riots have been, most of the rioting has been. And um, now in in their neighborhood, there's people just setting up tents in um, parks and um, in uh, empty lots. There's a lot of drug dealers and a lot of drug use. And they wanted to pull a meeting because they they wanted prayer so that they would know how they would know how to bring their light and their love to the situation. They wanted God's wisdom. They wanted us to come around and kind of be their tribe or their intercessors for prayer for them. And as I, um, as we prayed, it was such a precious time. But there was something about my friend, and as she spoke about um, the, the peace in her heart and the joy in her heart to be living in what could be, what is, and could be incredibly volatile, her attitude was one that was humble and joyful and trusting. That was her disposition towards the Lord. And that was like an exhortation without words towards me. Like, how would have I responded? Would I have 
So one particular thing that um, she expressed was that she came out of her house one day and there was just this dude sitting on her on her front porch charging his phone. And she was just like, well, hi. And she was just so loving towards him. Just held a conversation. How many of us would have done that? Pretty sure Jesus would have. She said it was a divine appointment. And she's searching for what Jesus, he, her and her husband are searching for what Jesus might have for them in these every days ahead. Though what the enemy meant for evil in riots and craziness and drug addiction and, and um, drug dealers, the image of God is still in each individual and they are the image bearers of the most holy king. And our friends knew that. When that word or that charge came, you know, how might, um, in what situation can you choose to not take advantage of your own gain? Or um, when the way we treat others reveals um, what we believe and value. I saw that in them over our Zoom meeting. The way we treat others reveals what we believe and value. They value humans. They value the image bearers of God and they believe that we all are and that we all deserve to be loved and find the light of Jesus. So I started to pray, Lord, what do you want me to know about these? And he's just like, I am teaching you a lesson with our friend's response. I have strategically placed you where you live, Janelle. You asked for divine appointments and I showed you one through their life. Um, and through their interaction. Um, I will bring divine appointments to you, for I have come to save the weary, the lost, the broken hearted. They are not forgotten, he says to me. They are my children, image bearers of the Most High. He also said in the scripture, he said, worship is incredibly powerful. I remember saying to our friends last night to put out into the open air just worship music um, through a speaker by their porch. It changes the atmosphere. The Lord saying worship is incredibly powerful. Um, it is powerful enough to, to break shackles. It's powerful enough to open prison doors. And it's powerful enough to usher others into the presence of God and find salvation there. That's what happened with Paul and Silas. And maybe our prison doors aren't bars in front of us. Maybe our prison doors are what we, we, we go to or what we feel stuck in um, that brings security or, or life instead of just going to God. Maybe our shackles are a repetitive sin that we don't feel like we've been able to, to shake. Maybe it is an addiction. But... God's worship of God can break that. So we just talked about how powerful worship and my friend walks around her neighborhood literally collecting needles from from heroin users or drug users and throwing them away and cleaning up her, her neighborhood and she worships at the same time. Very powerful. Her interaction with what's going on in her neighborhood was an exhortation to my heart. And I hope it's an exhortation to all of our hearts. How does God want to use us in this season? How do we bring the light of Jesus out? And how do we bring his love to others? I'm going to pray he shows you like he's showing me to through their example. And that brings us to um, Jesus Calling by Sarah Young. She writes from the perspective of Jesus ta about God talking to us. And... Um, you can download her app or order her book. God's perspective. God speaking to us. Relax in my peaceful presence. Do not bring performance pressures into our sacred space of, communi of communion. When you are with someone you trust completely, you feel free to be yourself. This is one of the joys of true friendship. True friendship. Though I am Lord of Lords and King of Kings, I also desire to be your intimate friend. When you are tense or pretentious in our relationship, I feel hurt. I know the worst about you. 
but I also see the best in you. I long for you to trust me and fully be yourself with me. When you are real with me, I am able to bring out the best in you. and The very gifts I have planted in your soul. Relax and enjoy our friendship. That's today's piece of peace. God bless you.